All right, we're starting out laying down today. So our primary goal right now is just to spread the whole back out on the floor. I want you to kind of pick it up and kind of smoosh it down. Maybe put a soft bend in your elbows so that your shoulders externally rotate to flip your palms up. <sighs> Take a few really big breaths into your chest and just start to let go completely. Big inhales through your nose. Big exhales through your nose. Get big on your inhales. Bigger, bigger. Get small on your exhales. Smaller, smaller. And as you lay here, just start to wake up this really incredible, mysterious force, your breath. I want you to start to wake up your breath energy making it big and cleansing until you feel your whole body start to kind of light up and warm up with this beautiful breath work. If you've been sitting a lot today and your low back feels kind of locked, maybe put a little bend in your knees and drop them toward each other. Okay, just making a little bit more space for your low back to neutralize downward. Each exhale, you feel more relaxed. Each inhale fills your lungs and your body with new fresh potential. Each exhale cleans out, lets go, everything else. Stay with your breath. It makes a roar sound in your ears that's nice and calming. As you breathe here, notice your body. Notice what places let go really easily. What places are still holding on? Notice those with equal compassion and amusement. Take a moment to be extremely present with your thoughts. Exercise the same amused compassion when you watch your thoughts as when you look at tension in your body or patterns in your behaviors. Just watch your thoughts here. We'll just bring in a little gentle movement now. So I just want you to keep that big breath moving. You can always come back to just breathing deeply. So with the arm bent kind of arrangement, so your chest feels big, maybe even you scoot your shoulder blades further underneath your heart so that it spreads open more readily. Put some bend in your knees and bring the feet towards where your hips are, but then walk them wide away from each other. So you have these big wide knees and we'll just start to windshield wiper the legs side to side. So just make this really gentle, okay? It's just hardly any effort at all at first. We're really just waking up these joints. So we want gentle internal hip rotation and then gentle external hip rotation on both sides. And your low back is getting this really nice massage. It's getting gently wrung out. You might feel your hips and your low back adjusting here with some pops. <laughs> and as long as it feels good, it's okay.
So maybe this was really gentle at first, but now that it's a bit more lubricated in the joints, everything's warmer, maybe you start to activate the knees downward. So as if you're trying to touch the floor. Notice how maybe a little bit of downward pressure in your upper body. So your upper body is pressing against the floor here. Could that help you to stabilize and get a little bit more ability, more mobility in your low back and your hips? So upper body presses the floor, lower bodies twisting and moving. And let's kick up this twist a little bit. Let's make it even more twisty. So next time your knees point up, pause. Pick your feet up and put your knees together over your hips. Please keep that really strong upper body pressing down feeling. So I want you to feel really big and stable across your big strong chest and hover your legs to one side. Just hover them there. Take a breath in and a breath out. Inhale the legs back into center. Exhale them to the other side. Keep your shoulder blades down. A full breath in. A full breath out. Inhale back to center. And exhale to the other side. And now can we just go side to side. Inhaling through center. Exhaling to twist. And let's take a few more rounds like this. So we've moved the twist up toward the middle and upper back. And if you want a really great spinal massage here, really complete twist for your spine, look away from your knees as you exhale and hover them. Okay, complete twist for your beautiful spine. Maybe three more times on each side. And if you prefer here, maybe a little extra core work, a little extra spice, you can extend your legs completely and hover them to the side. So you're going to work a little more in your core that way. So you decide what's right for you. Maybe two or three more times on each side. Press your upper body down. Stabilize to mobilize. One more. All right, and then let the legs come back into center. Bend your knees back inward if you extended them and just tuck your hands behind your knees here. If you can interlace your fingers, you can squeeze your knees that much further towards your heart. So either way, just pull your knees towards your heart. And take some nice breath here. Notice if either one of your hip creases is talking to you, okay, might be one more than the other. And if you want a little more here, you can grab your knees, fingers interlaced around your shins and pull the knees a little closer. Could you press your shoulder blades to the floor here and lift your sternum slightly? Maybe one more big breath here, pressing your whole back body into the floor. And then go ahead and let that go. Let's put the left foot on the floor. And then take your hands to the back of your right thigh again. So just back where they were before. And we'll extend that right heel up to the ceiling. So we're going to get a little bit more into the back of your leg and warm it up a little bit here. So put a really nice flex in your right foot, okay? A dorsi flex. Your toes are trying to touch your shin. And keep that. And that's going to help you activate the front of your leg, okay? And with that nice activation in that uh, ankle, bend your knee and pull your heel towards your glute, flexing your knee. Press the heel up to the ceiling, extending your knee, pull the heel towards your glute, flexing. So let's take a few more flexion and extensions, please. Feel your hamstrings under your hands. Big, big muscles on the back of your thigh. They take a lot. Of, they take a lot, all right? 
There are big workhorses in our lives. And so by gently lengthening here, maybe you can find a very pleasant stretch. And next time you come up with that right foot, hold it right there. Flexing in the ankle, please. Big flex in the ankle. And you decide whether you want the knee a little bit more bent or a little bit more extended as you pull the knee towards your heart. So again, try to ground your shoulder blades and lift your sternum here. How would that feel? See if you can find just the perfect amount of opening behind that leg. Maybe one more really nice breath in here. And with your exhale, oh, release that left leg. Go ahead and drape it on top of the left. So we release the right leg, sorry. Drape it on top of the left. So your legs are crossed. And you have the option to just cross at the knee here. Or if you want a little more tuck of that right foot, you can tuck it behind the left calf. So single cross or double cross, it's up to you. Go ahead and drop your knees to the left right away. Drop them over there. And we're going to look to the right and enjoy this little twist. So feel free to pick your shoulder blades up and move them a little bit to the left if that helps get your twist a little bit more twisty. Nice breath here. We're going to take five or six long, slow ones. Okay, notice the whole right glute, outer hip, IT band, all the tissue on the outside of that right hip and leg. Maybe we can let each exhale drain a little bit more attention out of that spot. With your exhales, think of pulling your belly button into your spine and strengthening all the muscles around your low back inward towards your spine. So in, in this yoga practice that we undertake in our lives, we can use the exhales to strengthen those belly pulling inward muscles. And that's really going to give us a healthier low back across the board as we as we, uh, as we grow. <laughs> so exhales are a great opportunity for that. Let's come back through center and let's switch sides. So we'll just uncross this right knee, put the right foot on the floor, and now the left leg will be the up leg. Fingers interlaced behind that thigh. And with a very nice flex in your right ankle, Feel that you're already getting a nice little calf stretch there. We'll start to flex and extend the left knee. Pull the heel down, press the heel up. So notice, is this side totally different from the other one? Chances are it is in at least a couple of ways. Next time you press the heel up, hold. And we'll start to find that ideal opening in the back of your leg. So flex the ankle, extend the knee as much as you like, and start to pull it towards you. Ground your shoulder blades, okay? Lift your heart. By resisting the floor a little bit with your back body in this way, you might find you can release a little more in your hamstrings, in your lower back. One more breath right here. And let's let it go. Go ahead and drape that left leg across the right. So we can single cross at the knee, double cross at the ankle. You decide, drop your knees to the right. And we're building a twist by looking to the left. Okay, here I like to start by picking up shoulder blades and moving them in the direction of the knees. Just helps to get a more twisty twist. 
And make sure you look away. Long spine inhales, belly button to spine on your exhale. Okay, check this out, experiment with this. As you lay here and breathe, continue to breathe right here. Press your shoulder blades down and could you arch your back up off the floor a little bit? Like you're trying to do a back bend in this twist. How would that feel? Maybe two more breaths. Big, spacious chest, strong belly. And then take your time bringing your knees back into center and let's uncross them. And keeping your knees bent, scoot your feet right up by your hips. And let's keep the arms stretching out overhead here. We're gonna get a really nice upper back massage using the floor. So push your shoulder blades nice and firmly underneath your heart and maybe a slight bend in your elbows. And you can always adjust as we go along. So we're gonna use this bridge pose to get a back massage. Pushing into the floor on your inhale, lift your hips, but please keep your knees moving in toward each other so you get that core engagement. At the same time, swim your hands all the way down to reach for your heels. So you just moved your arms, okay? And then you're inhaling to drop your hips and then reach your hands again away from your feet. So shoulder movement and the hips are moving up and down. So we're inhaling, hands reach for feet, hips up. Exhaling, hips down, hands back. Okay, you keep going, breathe with your own pace, your own rhythm. Maybe close your eyes. And we'll do this for several more rounds. So you have lots of time. So just dive into this movement. So please keep some engagement between your knees, okay? Because that's how you're gonna keep the core awake here. But also make sure there's a lot of space in your neck. So your chin is not pointing at your chest. It's almost trying to point up. You're trying to create an arch under your neck. Keep it going. Maybe three more rounds just like this. And I want to encourage you to kind of linger up at the top of the bridge when you're your shoulders are nice and pressed against the floor. Find that nice mobility in your spine, okay? One vertebra rolls up, one vertebra comes down. Okay, next time you're up, let's pause up there and just enjoy it. So press shoulders down. Okay, put a little space under your neck. Your nose points directly up at the ceiling here. And some engagement between your knees. So let's find that core involvement that we want to cultivate here. Nice breath. So we're gently warming your back body here. And you can decide how fiercely or how gently you'd like to warm it by engaging your legs toward each other more or less. You decide. Additionally, you may want to explore a little more opening across your chest by joining your hands perhaps and scooching your shoulder blades down underneath your big, big, big heart. You can even press the floor that much more with your hands, press down and peel open your whole front body. Really nice opening for the fronts of your shoulders here. One more big breath in and your big luscious bridge. Let's come down really slowly for the exhale, okay? Maybe it takes several breaths. One vertebra down at a time. Super uber slow. The tailbone continues moving away from your head as you descend. Maybe just now beginning to bring the tailbone down and release that. Let's take a few more windshield wipers just to maybe 
maybe a few more little pops that need to come out after that. All right, uh, bring in your knees here and you can just tuck your hands behind them. And I wanna have us just gently rock and roll forward and back a few times. It's a really nice back massage from the mat. And it's a really playful kind of a core engagement exercise because when you come up, see if you can balance on your hips, maybe with the aid of your tippy toes. Remember to breathe. Let's do it one more time. Come on up, see if you can hold in your boat, maybe tippy toes down, maybe not for three more breaths. Okay, you can always drop hands and feet, grab your knees or for your last breath or two, maybe challenge yourself to reach past for your feet, belly button to spine. Ah, go ahead and let that go. Drop your feet down in front of you and just point your knees out to the right. And I'll just turn slightly so that I can be your mirror. Okay. Uh, so let's take the left toes and point them directly behind you. So now your left knee points forward, left toes point back. So we've internally rotated that left hip. And let's externally rotate the right hip. So the right toes will just step onto your left knee. Okay, and that's where we'll start. So a mermaid posture. So go ahead and drop your right hand over on the right. Lift your hips nice and high. Press into your knees here. Take a big side stretch across your left side. So we're inhaling right here. And we exhale to come down other side, same idea. This time the hips stay down. Inhale, right side opens up. Exhale, bring it down. So I'd like to do this maybe five or six times on each side. Maybe close your eyes while you do this, okay? The floor is right there. Sometimes it's nice just to feel yourself moving through space. Keep going. Okay, we wanna feel a really big opening all across both sides. Notice when you come up that you can really expand that side with your breath. Okay, next time you come down, let's just pause. Your hips land. Pause here, extend your left leg so it's really long. And then make sure your left foot comes to the floor so you're, you're really rolling the outer edge of your foot kind of water tight to the floor. And you can use everything you have on the floor to push up to a little supported side plank. But before we commit more to this, let's arrange the right knee to be a little more supportive. If you put it under your right hip and point the toes straight behind you, it should be a lot more, um, a lot more supportive for you. So just take that time to settle in. And I'd like to activate this uh, left shoulder and really open it up. So to do that, I like to think of reaching out through the bones of the left arm, but pulling back in the muscle. So feel the shoulder activate and wake up when you do that. And we're gonna circle it out nice and slow. Just thinking of activating that whole shoulder and really isolating to the best of your ability. Bones reach out, muscles pull in. Okay, reverse it. This time push through the palm. Nice, and next time you reach out, we'll just pause there and enjoy the posture, okay? So supported side plank gives us a lot of extra space in this left side. And so you can spend some time just opening up that whole side of your rib cage. You might feel it in your low back. 
Okay, I want to encourage you to do your best to point your tailbone at your left toes so that your spine is long. And maybe if you're feeling tight in your chest and shoulder, you peel open your left armpit by cactusing that arm open to the ceiling. And breathe. Maybe try a little smile here. Maybe one more really big breath in here and supported side plank. And we'll bring it all the way back down. So if you just sit down again, uh, we'll just switch sides. So go ahead and point all your toes to the right and all your knees to the left. And we'll do it all over again, but opposite. So the right toes will point back behind you and the left knee toes tickle your right knee. So when you look down, you have this little mermaid triangle shape and left hand down. Go ahead and pick yourself up, big breath in, big right side stretch. And exhale to bring it down. So keep going just like this. Should feel really nice. Close your eyes. Think of that whole side of your body expanding with each movement. Maybe one more on each side. Feels really good. And next time you come down, we'll transition to a supported side plank. So extend that right leg. Let's press the outer edge of the right foot down. So we have the support of that foot and then press up to supported side plank. Once you get here, make sure to rearrange the left knee so it's under your hip and the left toes point behind you. And then take a little time fidgeting so that everything feels just right. If you look down at your hands and your knees and your feet, they should all be in a straight line with each other. All right, so let's activate this right arm now. Reach out through the right arm bones, pull back in the muscle, feel the shoulder click into action. And we'll start to circle out the shoulder, isolating and activating. Use your breath right, to open up anything that feels sticky or tense. And let's rewind, pushing through the palm. Activate and isolate. All right, now that we've warmed up this beautiful right shoulder, pause and let's just enjoy this posture, supported side plank. So there are so many things that we can experiment with and enjoy here, but two of the major factors are the length in the right side. So just appreciate that. Do your best to point your tailbone at your right toes and reach away with your fingertips. Okay, so that's really nice. And then you might also bring in this factor of the chest opening across the chest. You can cactus the right arm open and peel open your big chest. So two factors for you to experiment with. Maybe three more beautiful breaths here. If you're right-handed like me, this side has so much tension stored in it. So always take a little extra longer if you have extra tension. All right, my friends, this time I'd like to bring us down to hands and knees. So hands and knees just spin naturally to the ground here. And let's stretch out our wrists, okay? 
A lot of us are working at a lot of desk time, a lot of device time. So let's take care of our wrists. Go ahead and flip your palm up so your fingers point back at you. And try just one hand flipped over. And if one hand is fine, go ahead and do two. But if not, just do one at a time. You know what to do. So palms are flipping up, elbows are slightly moving inward. Let's do some cat cows along with this wrist stretch. So with your inhale, still pull your heart forward like you normally would, lifting your belly button to your spine. And with your exhale, push the floor away, round your spine. Great time to shake out your head. <laughs> Take a few more rounds, just like this. Wrist stretch cat cow. So you have lots of time, but here's what I want you to think about while you're doing this cat cow. Think about finding any little places in your spine or your rib cage that are kind of sore and spending a little extra time rolling through them as if you could expand them and open up by rolling extra space there. Maybe two or three more rounds. I like to close eyes here. Maybe one more. All right, bring it back to a flat back. Whew. If you were stretching out your wrists, that's quite a wrist stretch. <laughs> so you might shake them out. I'm gonna get us off our hands here so they can rest after that big stretch. Uh, tuck your toes and go ahead and lift your knees. And with a really generous bend in your knees, we're gonna come to a forward fold, just hanging here. So maybe you take your feet a bit whitish, maybe mat width, and you can gently bend and sway and just hang here. Ah. So our spines spend so much time under compression. Okay, your upper body weighs a lot and your spine has to hold all of that up aside from the other things you lift. So this is a great time to let it hang in traction and decompress. So take your time here. Maybe grab your elbows. And maybe if everything's feeling pretty good, join your hands behind you and move them away from your head. Now we wanna keep a little teeny softness in your elbow, okay? Not completely locked out. And let's play around with this spine hanging in traction idea. What if you bend a lot in your left knee? Your right knee is more extended. Your left knee is more, more bent. Could you rest the left side of your chest, kind of like your left armpit place on your left knee or thigh and roll to look over at the right? A few breaths here, a little hanging twist. Keep your neck long. Maybe one more breath. Swing it through center. Could you bend more into the right knee now? Rest that right shoulder kind of armpit place on your right knee and roll to look at the left. Let's take a few breaths here. Spine is decompressing. It's probably already, in truth, gotten about a centimeter or maybe an inch longer. Maybe one more breath here. Bring it on back to center. All right, release your hands. And your feet are wide. Okay, we've got our feet about mat width already. So maybe we point the toes more out and the heels more in here and sink down into a squat. So if a squat's feeling a little bit limited today, feel free to use your elbows on your knees and just sink into it as slowly as you like. But if everything's going pretty great with your squat and you can drop your hips down, go ahead and do that. And maybe you put your palms together, stick your elbows between your knees and gently press your knees apart. 
And we'll take some time breathing right here. Ah, squats, okay, so there's so much in our hips, no matter what, every day, you got a lot of stuff going on in your hips. So give your hips time. Send your breath where you feel tension. And once we've settled into our squat a little bit, maybe we can kind of waggle, kind of wiggle it side to side. Feel free to adjust your feet. We want the palm, or we want the heels down if we can have it, but we may need to adjust the width. And do your best to have a long spine. And now find some stillness here. I really want you to start activating into your legs. So sometimes we can get a little bit passive in our squats and that's no problem. But what happens when we give a little bit of activity? It doesn't have to be a whole 100%, maybe just five to 10% activity, squeezing those knees in toward each other and pressing down into your legs. Do you find maybe that you can release a little bit more in the hips if you activate the leg bones a little bit downward into the earth. And that's the magic of yoga. Just a little bit of activity in the right places can give us the release we need. So we're gonna get our hips a little bit warmer here. So feel free to take this really slow and linger where it feels nice. But on your inhales, I'm gonna have you press into your strong leg bones, lift your hips, Come up to standing, and as you do that, interlace your fingers and press them out to one side. So you're pressing your palms out. You're getting a side stretch here. As you exhale, come back down to your squat, just where you were before. Let's do the other side. So inhaling, press into your heels, interlace your fingers, lean out to one side, press, open your side. Exhale down to your squat. Can we do that a few more times? Okay. Maybe you challenge yourself to do it with your eyes closed. Maybe you're doing it really extra slowly. I want you to interpret this. Just kind of make it what you need. Okay, do you notice your hips waking up a little bit more? Maybe one more on each side. Last side. As you come down into your squat, maybe notice if it feels any different than the first one we did, and then walk your hands out in front of you until you can come back to your hands and knees. And maybe it would feel nice after all that work in the squats to take the hands wide and the feet wide. And let's take some gentle circles, kind of orbiting the hips and shoulders over hands and knees. Now let's take it back around the other way. Okay, from here, my friends, let's come all the way down to the mat. So bring your knees back toward each other. Come on down to your belly. Okay, so I'd like to do some cobra time with you, just getting the front of the body to open up. And let the back body do some of the, let the back body do some of the work every now and then. So start with your forehead just grounded, hands under shoulders, elbows squeezing in by your ribs. Before we come up into this gentle back extension, let's make sure the low back is 100% safe. First, point your tailbone at the center of the earth. Really point it down. Do you feel your glutes engage? Keep that. Did you notice that your belly button lifted slightly when you do that? Keep that. So that's all we really need to remember is tailbone points at the center of the earth. The low back is safe. Grip the mat with your strong cobra hands and inhale as you pull your cobra heart up and forward. So the tailbone points down, the heart points up and exhale to bring it down. So we're gonna take a few more cobras. They can be very little and gentle, just rising a few inches off the ground, or they can be big and deep. It's really what feels nice today. You do what feels nice. 
And just take maybe five or six more. Maybe even take your hands out to the side. And notice how that feels. Maybe one more really nice cobra. And then exhale, bring it all the way down. Um, take your arms out to the sides here and make uh, like goal posts out of your arms. And so we just did some cobras. We warmed up the chest and shoulders a little bit with that. And now I'd really like to give you a really nice shoulder and chest stretch. So uh, looking at your right hand, but keeping your left arm bent like it is, uh, roll into your left side. So at this point, you can slide the left elbow up or down to make it feel just right. So kind of adjust it here to where you're getting just the right stretch in your left chest and armpit. Do you feel that in front of your shoulder? When you've got it just right in the left elbow, then commit by tucking that left knee up and in. And then you can just be here and breathe. So we're gonna take some time here just enjoying this left side chest stretch. If you need to back out, drop the right shoulder. If you want more, reach up with the right hand and press the floor very gently with your left. Do you feel how when you resist the floor a little bit, you can open up a little bit more in the shoulder. So play around with that. If you're still feeling great, you can drop the right hand across your back. Then maybe wiggle the fingertips underneath your left side. Keep pushing the floor gently with your left hand. And remember to breathe. All right, take in your last few breaths here. Just know that you have time and there's no rush, okay? This is a great posture. We could spend a long time here. But for now, let's roll back through center and to the other side. So no rush, back to your belly. Okay, and you can just take a moment to let that soak in if you need to. And then goalpost arms looking to the left, roll onto the right side. So here's where you wanna adjust where your right elbow is. You can move it up or down. Okay, find that perfect spot. And then commit by tucking the right knee in. And then you're here. And I'll spin around to face you. So if you notice that you're trying to hold your head up, um, just let it go. Just let the head rest. And just take a little time to observe the effect of this opening on your right chest, shoulder, and armpit. And after about 30 seconds, you might notice that things tend to open up a little bit more. So we always wanna give postures like this some time to work. But if you want a little more, you can reach up with that left hand and start to press the floor gently with the right hand, like you're pushing the floor down. Notice when you press down in the right hand, you really do get a great opening across the front of the right shoulder. And again, it doesn't take a lot of effort just to maybe five or 10% of our effort sometimes makes a big difference in these postures. Maybe the left hand drops across your back and you can wiggle the fingers under your right side. Mm. 
Maybe one more breath right here. As you're ready, <laughs> come back through center. No rush, just take your time, okay? From here, because we've really made a whole lot of nice space in your chest and shoulders, let's go ahead and uh, keep going with that theme. So press up to hands and knees here, and then install your hips right over your knees. Try to keep them from moving forward or back. So keep them right there. Walk your hands out as far as they'll go without moving your hips. And drop your head. So let's take a little time here in Anahatasana, open heart pose. So much nice space opening up in your chest and shoulders here. So remember to activate a little bit. So here's what we're looking for. Put a little lift in your belly button so that you're not just dropping into your low back, okay? And if we neutralize the low back, this opening will roll up into your upper back, which is what we're looking for. If you're comfortable just staying on your forehead, maybe just hang there. Otherwise, try your chin a little bit more into your throat. Um, but you can start to press your fingers down here. Notice if you push down into your fingers, do you get a little bit of opening in your armpits? You can try lifting your palms and elbows too. Maybe resting on your chin. Big chest here. With each inhale, your spine gets longer. With each exhale, your chest gets a little closer to the floor. Maybe one more big breath in here. And then bring your hands back up underneath your shoulders. All right, should be feeling so nice and open across your chest. Go ahead and sit back on your heels here. We'll take a little child's pose to uh, finish out this practice. Okay, so you can have your knees together or apart. Really whatever feels nice. And drop your head. So maybe once you first get down into your child's posture, you kind of wiggle your hips side to side. Massaging those hip creases, allowing the low back to release a little bit more. And then allow yourself to completely let go here. Release control over your breath. Just let it do its own thing now. Let go of any control over your body. Let go of all effort, all muscular action. Just let go and be here. Let go of any control over your thoughts and emotions. Observe them exactly as they are, just raw, just like clouds on the sky. And rather than using your awareness to do and produce and control right now, use 100% of your awareness just to be present and be aware of everything that's happening in this moment. Just observing. the sounds in your immediate environment, your breath, the particular sound quality in the room that you're in. A little further than that, the sounds of the world just outside of your room, in your house maybe. Can you extend your awareness to maybe things that you could hear happening outside of your house? Notice 
sensations with the same intensity. The feeling of your breath and your heartbeat. The feeling of your head on the floor. All tension melted from your body. And just cultivate this moment of 100% pure presence. Cultivate bliss. And beautiful people, this is where I will leave you today. So please keep resting just like this for as long as you can. It's very important that you take some time to let the magic of your practice soak in and integrate. But no matter what your practice holds in store for you for the next few minutes, thank you so much for joining me.